North of 49, a guide to the rest of your life. Welcome to North of 49. Today we meet Daniel Wesley, a man of tremendous spirit, who's used his natural talent as an athlete to overcome adversity, to achieve an admirable balance in his own life, and to collect 12 Paralympic medals along the way. Also on today's show, we'll learn more about one of Daniel's passions, Transcendental Meditation. And we'll talk with Dr. Doug Clement about how to continue challenging the boundaries of your fitness, especially as you age. At 51, Daniel Wesley is an incredibly impressive and accomplished athlete. Yet Daniel is the first to acknowledge that, other than a little bit of tetherball and tag, athletic endeavors weren't really important to him when he was growing up. In 1973, I had an accident. I fell under a moving train, and that put me in the hospital at the same time as a, a young Rick Hansen. And him and I got involved in racing our wheelchairs down the hallways. It wasn't until I was back at school in 1977 that he came out and invited me out to play some, some wheelchair basketball and some wheelchair volleyball. And, uh, and that's where my whole sport involvement began. Daniel's natural athletic abilities took him all the way to the Paralympics at a time when these games were really starting to take shape. When I got involved in the Paralympic sports, um, back then, just before I got involved, the, the, it had its own little world. It was just guys in wheelchairs racing around. And, and I happened to get involved in 1988, and at that time they embraced the disabled sports by allowing us to compete in the same venues as the able-bodied Olympics. And uh, that really upped the ante or, or, you know, gave us some credibility as disabled athletes. Daniel threw everything he had at the Games and went on to compete in both the Summer and the Winter Paralympics. He earned a total of 12 Paralympic medals, four of them gold. I've been to five Paralympic Games now. My first Paralympic Games were in 1988, where I was racing a wheelchair. I, um, I entered all the different wheelchair races back then. So any given day, I was racing two and three times a day. It was a pretty high uh, intensity to be competing at. Impressive as that is, Participating in the Paralympics was only one aspect of Daniel's athletic career. He also competed in a wide array of other races and sport events, and collected a treasure trove of medals in a variety of sports accordingly. Daniel attributes part of his success in sport to cross-training, a concept he embraces both physically and mentally. When I was racing my sit-ski, I was cross-training using tennis. Now, tennis and skiing are similar in that you really have to let go of what just happened. So if you hit the ball, you win the point, you have to say, forget it, let's just stay in this moment and get ready for the next point. One of the things that helps Daniel stay in the moment and keep his focus is transcendental meditation, which is a big part of his training regime. I practice transcendental meditation. I, I learned when I was 20, um, when I was first getting involved in my sports, the, the other guys were all training pretty intensely. And I thought, well, that if I wanted to, to do really well, I had to rest really well. And so I took up this TM and it gave me a chance to, to settle down and, and recover from my training so that I could uh, I could, you know, become fresh again and really get the most out of my next training session. Along with meditation, Daniel has also taken up dance and soapstone sculpture, which allows him to express himself artistically while still tapping into his athletic side. The sculptures are a unique little metaphor for developing yourself. You start with something pretty coarse and you have a bit of a vision and you just chip away at it until you, you find that, um, that vision coming to reality. 
with the art, what you're able to do is, you're, because it's sculpture, you're able to do something really physical. You know, you finish with something that's solid and hard and, 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 and you feel stronger from, from having done it. As the proud father of two children, it's important for Daniel to tell his story in hopes of inspiring younger generations and others who might be facing adversity. Over the years, a big part of what I was doing was, was going to schools and, and presenting to the student groups about having a disability. And what I would let them know is, is that, you know, when something happens to you, you, you get sad sometimes. Then you might get a little mad because, you know, you want to break through the barriers that you're faced with. And then you're glad again because you do get to um, make plans and realize dreams. Daniel is also able to share this message through his job at MediChair, where he works in sales. I've been in this field because of my disability. Um, I've been in the, in the disabled community quite extensively. And my work is really quite nice because I get a chance to make a difference in people's lives. Um, some of them are new into the wheelchair and some of them have been in the wheelchairs for a while and, and, uh, and it's nice to be there to help them in that transition or, you know, in the path that they're moving on. Although he no longer competes, Daniel remains a strong presence in the Paralympic community. When the bid for the 2010 Games came to Vancouver, he was instrumental in presenting the plan to the International Olympic Committee and even partook in the opening ceremonies, an experience he cherishes. I was honored to be able to uh, carry the torch during the ceremonies. I received the flame from Betty and Roly Fox and handed it on to um, Marnie Abbott. It takes a lot of work to bring the Paralympics to Vancouver and, and it was a real joy. For Daniel, the combination of athletic pursuits, artistic endeavors and a strong spiritual connection allows him to create and savor a wonderfully healthy balance in his life. As I've, you know, gotten to this age, you know, I realize that, you know, what we have here as a human is you've got a physical existence, a mental ability, and a, and a spiritual side. Um, all three of these still need to be addressed and nurtured. These days, Daniel keeps fit by hand cycling and playing tennis. He continues to meditate and he also has one more very special gold medal moment that he would like to realize. You know, if I've got any big plans coming up, it would be really nice to get married sometime soon. I've got a wonderful girlfriend, her name's Teresa, and uh, you know, and, and, and that could be on the horizon too. North of 49, a guide to the rest of your life.